Today, you're gonna to learn how to re-optimize your SEO content with ChatGPT so that it ranks higher on Google. And this is gonna help you achieve higher SEO rankings, squeeze more traffic from the existing content you've already got, and you can easily automate this with ChatGPT so you don't need to hire expensive writers or figure it all out yourself. Now, the first step we have to do is pick an article. And the best way to do this is to find keywords already ranking on the first page of Google and then re-optimize those so that they can rank a little bit higher. And you might say, why would we focus on those articles instead of others? When you have a new article, it's not ranking anywhere, right? And it might take a few weeks to actually get any rankings or traffic out of it. Whereas if you look at the CTR, the click-through rate from Google, you can see that even just a slight move from sixth to fifth or from fifth to third, increases the click-through rate and traffic from Google by a significant amount. Basically doing this will have a much bigger impact versus creating a whole new piece of content and then waiting for it to rank for several weeks and then re-optimizing it. So the first thing to do is to pick the article. Now we're gonna focus on this keyword right here. It doesn't have a massive amount of volume, but it is low keyword difficulty. And let's be honest, the search volume is probably 10 times that simply because there's different variants of the keyword people are typing into Google, which means that you can get traffic from different searches. And if you look at the ranking of this page, right now it's ranking number three. So if we bump it up to number one, then all of a sudden it's flying, it's getting tons of traffic. And we can see the existing article here. now. Before we jump into that, I just wanna show you how powerful this is. So we had an article, Beautiful Birds, and it literally didn't get any traffic for ages, right? So you can see zero traffic, zero traffic. It got a little bit of a bump there, and then it went back down, and Google was thinking about it for a long time. And until we've re-optimized it, since I've been doing this case study with AI, you can see that the traffic just went mental simply because we re-optimize the content and after that the daily traffic is climbing and climbing. You might be saying what's going on there? Actually I messed up and I actually deleted the analytics code off my website for one day and then <laughs> thinking oh no we've got a penalty but now the traffic is back and it's getting bigger than ever every single day which is awesome. And this is all through the optimization technique I'm about to show you. So with that, let's just hop into how to do it. Now I could look through the page manually. I can see a bunch of things to improve already, but if we actually paste it into ChatGPT, one of the best things we can do to improve the depth of this article and the comprehensiveness of this, which means that it's gonna be better content overall for the user and answer their question better, is to paste this into ChatGPT. So we've got all the content from the article here. And we're gonna to say to ChatGPT, give me a list of semantically relevant subtopics missing from this article. And we're gonna change that to ChatGPT4 just so that we can get a bit more of a comprehensive answer and that AI is a bit smarter, let's be honest. Now, why would we do this? Adding related subtopics to your article can actually improve your article's SEO because it helps Google understand your content better. And when you include additional relevant subtopics, it tells Google that your article is more comprehensive and useful to people who are searching for information on that topic. So, why would you do that? This can increase your chances of your website showing up in Google for a wider range of search queries, leading to more traffic on your site. And additionally, it provides a more complete and helpful article that can improve the user experience and build trust with the audience. So, here's some examples of how we can improve it. And you can see there's actually a lot missing from our article that we could then start adding topics around. And what you can do is go through each of these subheadings and ask ChatGPT to create this. Now, if you don't know how to do that, what you can do is use a prompt of mine. I've got it in my GPT course, it's free. But you can use a prompt like this, right? You can put in your keyword, which we know already is camp rubber birds. Then we're gonna replace the keyword here, replace the keyword there, simple as that. And then we'll give it some of these headings, right? I'm actually only gonna take the top four, simply because I wanna go into depth in each of those topics before GPT runs out of volume to talk about. So whilst we're waiting for that to load, we're gonna start editing the post. And I wanna clean this up as well because if we're gonna re-optimize it, we might as well do it properly, right? And one of the things I can see on this page straight away is the fact that one of these videos is not working, right? This video has been turned to private. This is a common problem with adding videos from YouTube into your content, but I do add in it because it just makes your content a lot better. So whilst we're waiting for ChatGPT4 to do that, we're gonna add in a nice little YouTube video right here and we'll replace the old one. Let's delete that, get rid of that, paste this in. All right, GPT4 is still going. A few of the other things we're gonna talk about in a minute, 
how to improve your title, your introduction, where to fit in your new content on the page, and also we'll talk about other things you can supplement your content with. Now, the other good thing about doing this is that if you provide a more complete and helpful article, then you can improve the user experience of your website and build trust with your audience, which basically adds to your authority. And if you're doing link building to your site, you want your content to be as good as possible so that people are more likely to link to it, both naturally and also when you do outreach, right? So we can start taking some of these headings. Now, I'm not going to include this just because this is just like an intro and I've already got that from my article and it's not a very good one, let's be honest. So we'll take this content and normally you would edit it, but just to save a bit of time, before we start getting some dodgy YouTube comments. We'll turn that into a H2. We're gonna split the text up a little bit, just to make it a bit easier to read. And readability is something you can improve with GPT, which we'll talk about in a sec. Then we're gonna take the new content like this. Let's start. We'll paste these ones in as well. And if we look at the previous word count of this page, it was about 1,100 words, right? As soon as we've started adding more subheadings that are more useful, we can see that the content is now already 1,400 words. And actually, I bet if we look at the top ranking results for this keyword, we're gonna have a higher word count than the top ranking competitors, so article is more comprehensive. Now, you do have to be careful with that, but that's a topic for another video. Now, one of the common mistakes when you're creating an article is that people don't realize the value of an introduction. You want your audience to read your article. And if people just pogo stick off, then all the hard work you've done to get your rankings is totally wasted. You have to create something that leads to curiosity and makes people want to keep reading. So we'll delete that. We'll take the keyword again. We're going to use this prompt, improving the intro, right? And what this is going to do is just create a playful introduction that makes people want to keep reading, sets the tone for the article. It just makes it look like it's going to be something entertaining rather than just your bog standard Wikipedia copy. So let's copy and paste that into the article. And also we're gonna update the date on this content because the date is 2019. A lot has happened since then. So we're gonna update that to now. And I was actually speaking to some SEOs before and they were saying like, how oh, even just updating the published date makes a difference to Google's algorithm. Sometimes your rankings can just shoot up simply by updating the published date on the article. Now what we can do as well is you might want to make all of your content more entertaining. Now, a good way to do that, if you need to, for example, like this section, it's a little bit boring. We can paste that into ChatGPT and we can say, rephrase the text below in a playful tone of voice, making it easier to read by the audience and include your keyword, right? Which is camp rubber bird. So we'll place that and then we'll see what it can do. And you can see all of a sudden, it's a bit more humorous. And let's be honest, with content, it's not just about information and educating. A big part of it is entertainment, right? So if you can entertain and inform at the same time, your content is gonna be better than your competitors. Because most average writers don't even think that way, let alone attempt to create some more humor in their article. So this is a big win already. And you could even say, this is a prompt I saw on the internet before, as an ex-comedian, now working in the content marketing industry, improve this meta description to make it fun and engaging using wordplay and puns to make it more relatable. And then you can take your meta description, which was pretty average, let's be honest, if you're looking at it, and you can just turn it around and make it more entertaining. And then it's gonna have a little think about this and start typing something in. And one of the things you'll notice is that everyone has the same tool, but it's all about the prompts that you use, right? It's how you program the tool to create your content. So everyone is now capable of creating and scaling content for SEO. So the difference between you and your competitors, if you're all using the same tool, is your brain. Because your prompts, your research, how you use AI to leverage and achieve more comes down to you. Because yes, AI empowers you to create really good content but it's down to you to use your brain and prompt it in the right way. Now, it's come back to us with the meta description, but it's too long. So we're gonna say, make it maximum 15 words. And that way it's a lot shorter and it'll fit in. And we can just add a little bit to it. And there we go. So Now you could also get some nicely formatted tables for this as well, to improve the quality of your content. So you could say, give me a table on the characteristics of the camp rubber bird. And we use GPT 3.5 like this. It's gonna give us a nice copy and pasteable table that we can just pop down like this. 
and now your content is looking a lot more interesting, a lot more engaging, and it's gonna be different from everyone else's. Now, if we scroll down to the FAQs, we can see that there's only two or three, and there's probably a lot more we can do with that, right? So we're gonna type that into Google like this, and there's my page up there. Now, what you can do with these FAQs under the people or sites section is copy and paste them into chat GPT-4 like that. And you can ask it to create the HTML markup schema for these FAQs. So you can say create FAQ HTML schema for these questions. There we go. Nice and easy. We've got the code. Copy it on the right there. And then if we go back to our post, we can add a HTML. So if you're in WordPress, you just click custom HTML like that, paste this in, hit update, and hopefully, and when we refresh the page, you can see our FAQ schema is all good to go. And you might say, why would you use FAQ schema? What are the benefits versus just formatting it normally? First of all, by using FAQ schema, your website can qualify for rich snippets and search results, and also increase visibility, right? So if you set up that FAQ schema, your content is more likely to be featured and improves the user experience because by including an FAQ section on your website, you can provide quick, easy answers to the common questions your audience has, and then you can reduce the amount of time that people are trying to search through your content, or if they just can't get the answers they need, they're gonna bounce straight off anyway. So we're making good progress on this. First of all, we've got a good intro, we've got more content, we've got tables inside our content, we've also got FAQs and the schema, plus we've added a YouTube video, so the content is looking a lot better. And you can see how AI is really just an assistant to help you, because it's not just a copy and paste, one click answer, it's more like something that if you have the knowledge already, you can point it in the right direction and you get more leverage and you can achieve more with the knowledge you already have. Now, something else you can do, you can take the helpful content guidelines like this from Google. And this basically tells you exactly how to write high quality content that actually ranks. So you can take that, pop it into GPT like this, and then you can say the following into the five most important criteria. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take all of those complicated guidelines, split it into five things, and now you're wondering, what can we do with this? We can take all the content on our page and we can actually grade it and learn how to improve it. So if we copy this, we'll scroll down, see what the word count is on this, because you don't wanna paste more than 2,500 words into GPT, otherwise it will just break. And then we're gonna say, Evaluate the following content based on this criteria from a scale of one to 10. So basically we're taking the criteria from here, the five most important criteria that Google says you must use for creating high quality content. And then we're gonna paste it into this. And we're just gonna basically grade your content. And you can see that right now I've only got a seven out of 10, which is good, but it's not the best. And that's probably why it's not ranking number one. Now obviously ChatGPT cannot read videos and pictures. So even though it recommends improving those, we can't really do that. You probably would have scored higher if it could read videos and pictures. But what we can do is say, how can I improve this content to get a 10? And now I've got a ton of recommendations that I can use to improve. For example, adding more engaging and descriptive content, including more visuals, providing more scientific information, and also providing links to additional resources or further reading for readers who want to know more. And on that note, one thing I like to do, especially with scientific content like this, is actually link out to government and educational resources. So you can find .edu and .gov resources that you can add inside your content. And then when Google crawls your page, it's gonna say this page is very well referenced and it's linking to authority sources. So if we take the scientific name of this bird, we'll put it in quote marks, we'll type edu, org, and gov afterwards. This will give us a list of resources that we can then link inside our content. And now it's very easy to find high authority sites, right? So for example, a .gov, and then we can link that inside there like that. We've got another reference. And then you can go through all the stats, all the statistics you've included in your content, all the facts, fact check it as well, because it's GPT and some of it's wrong quite often, and then just add some resources and relevant sort of references in between. Now you've already scraped Google for FAQs, but you could ask GPT if there's any FAQs you missed off the content as well. So we'll take the article again, copy it, start a new chat, paste it in, and then we'll just ask it, are there any FAQs I've missed off this article? 
And thankfully in this case, we've included all the FAQs we should have done, which is great because now our article is way more comprehensive and therefore more likely to rank once we've done this. We could also ask it, are there any headings we've missed off too? And pretty much everything has been covered. Now, one thing I wanna show you, and this is not relevant for this article, but it looks really powerful, is using Microsoft Edge and its Bing feature to actually create product tables too, especially if you're recommending products. So what you can do is if you go to Microsoft Edge like this, we'll head on over to its AI chat feature. Now, once you're on the chat of Bing, you can say, give me a list of the best bird feeders. And now it's gonna come up with some recommendations as you can see here, they're nicely listed. And now you can say, can you compare them in a table like this? And here we have a nice comparison table of each product. And you've got the bird feeder, the type, the capacity, and the price. Now that's something you can't really do with ChatGPT because it doesn't have the latest updated info. And what you can also say is, can you add a review rating to each product? And let's see what it comes up with. Now I didn't quite like that. So what we did instead was ask it, can I add a star rating to each product? And now you can see you've got a star rating next to each product. So this is really cool because you can create really nice comparison tables to improve the content on your website. And if you look at Google's review guidelines on how to write high quality reviews, they actually do talk about, they cover comparable things to consider and also making sure that you include quantitative measurements about how something measures up in various categories of performance. So if we go back to Edge, you got the nice table there. And if you were creating a product review, we wouldn't use it in this article, but just to show you an example, you've got the nice copy and baseball table over here with the bird feeder, the type, the capacity, the price, and the rating. So you can create all your product comparison reviews using Bing and it automates it for you. And normally you would have to get a plugin or some sort of custom design to be able to do that. And I was thinking like, isn't this copyrighted? But actually, according to the US Copyright Office, work containing AI generated content can only be given copyright protection if the elements in the authorship of the work are done by a human and not a machine. And this is AI generated content from a machine. So do your own research, but it seems like you could get Bing to do most of the product comparison tables for you. So we're gonna delete that because it's not relevant to our article, but if you're doing money pages, it's awesome. So we've got our updated content. We're gonna hit publish like that, get it re-optimized. And that's basically how you can take a site that's not getting any traction or any traffic from a website, from human written content, and then re-optimize it so it starts getting well over 100 visitors a day, just from organic traffic. Now there's one final thing I want to show you, which is this fact checking tool. Now I've not checked it out myself. I do need to give it a whirl and I might do a video on it in the future. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments. I've seen it on YouTube around in a few different videos and it essentially fact checks all the content for your projects. 50% of the time, the facts are wrong with AI content. So if you can fact check it like this, particularly if you're in like a your money or your life category where getting the facts right is extremely important, then this could be a really powerful way to level up and re-optimize your old content or just include some new facts. And you can see you can use it for like product descriptions, blog posts, product reviews, etc. So thanks very much for watching. I'll leave a link to my free course in the comment section below. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to book in a free SEO strategy session where we look at your site and give you a custom tailored plan, you can book that in at juliangoldie.com. It's completely free. Or just check out my free book. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.